Recently, I've been playing a lot of the Halo Master Chief Collection for PC, which contains every Halo game except for most of them. And it's been really exciting for me because I've never had that experience of, you know, that, that everybody keeps telling me about, about how when they were a kid and they were negative five years old, they used to come home from school and play Halo 2 with all 75 of their friends on Xbox Live. Thank you. But it's sad because they no longer do that, and of course, there's nothing good has happened in their life since then. So finally, I get to have that meaningless, arbitrary experience that everybody keeps referring to as the hallmark of their childhood. And it's been pretty fun so far. I very much enjoyed Halo Reach, and Halo 1 seems to be delivering, you know, a similar enjoyable experience. They're very different games, of course. Both still fun, uh, but, but the main difference is that the, the Halo 1, you know, multiplayer developers, uh, you know, what they created was different from Halo Reach, whereas Halo Reach created a standard, fun multiplayer experience. Uh, the Halo CE developers, uh, you know, made something uh, that I would, uh, you know, equate to maybe playable cocaine. That I think that's fair. Now, don't get me wrong, I completely understand why Halo 1 is the way it is. It's considered a massive trendsetter when it comes to how modern first-person shooters are designed. And taking on such a, you know, mountainous task, of course, is going to yield some growing pains. But there, but there are still some things in this game that I, I look at them... And I, I wonder to myself, you know, how did this go down at the office? Like, like was everybody just like, yeah, hey, uh, is everybody okay with, like, if I made, like, the, the handgun, like, the secondary weapon that is supposed to be an addendum to your primary weapon? Is, is, is everybody okay if I just make that gun the best gun in any first-person shooter game? And everybody there was like, uh, yeah, I think it should just be the best gun. That, that, that's a good idea. Team King of the Hill. I don't keep it low, son. You'll have to find ammo as you go. I have never seen the meta of a multiplayer game so defined by one entity in my life, let alone a secondary weapon that is supposed to be, like, you know, a backup plan to your main weapon. And I kind of love it. I mean, every one-on-one -on -one engagement is this high skill, you know, who can land the most headshots in the given amount of time sort of affair. And it makes it really engaging. It's something that, you know, assault rifle 1v1s can't really supply to me. So, yeah, even though the Halo CE pistol is laughably fucking broken, I really do love it. it my one issue with it is, you know, Halo CE had the brilliant idea of uh, power weapons, and that is making weapons that are powerful, uh, you know, more powerful than the standard, but having them only accessible on the map, so you don't respawn with them, you can't start the game with them, etc. And it, it allows for pretty creative weapon choice. But it, it kind of sucks that the Magnum that you start out with every life, you know, rivals most of these power weapons to such an ex insane extent. Uh, you know, to the point where some of them are flat out unpickable. God, fuck. And I know it's over, but still I claim I don't know where else I can go over. See, I mean, in all honesty, I'd call the sniper rifle probably just a side grade to the pistol. But I think the reason it's so incredibly powerful, in at least in the context I played Halo CE, is because it's on PC. See, Halo was originally a console game. I don't think I need to tell everybody that. But the fact that you have a mouse and keyboard and a weapon that just lets you click on people a few times and fucking delete them, like, you can't really realize the true potential of something like that with a controller. You know, that's why controller first-person shooters have aim assist. But with Halo CE on PC, 
you're now getting to see the full extent of what a design like that can do to a multiplayer game. But I still wouldn't call it the worst design thing in Halo CE. No, I'd say Halo CE's biggest design problems probably come in the form of its maps. Welcome to boarding action. Uh, 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 uh. Team Slayer. What, what is that? What, what, what the fuck is that? What, what, what kind of eldritch creature is capable of making this fucking thing right here? It's beyond human comprehension. The layout of this fucking map. Like, I, I'm not a politician or anything. You can tell because I can actually, like, you know, semi-speak coherently. Where mechanics, where, where, where all the pool builder is. But, but this should be qualified as a fucking war crime for how awful it looks. So, so I feel like this clip right here perfectly summarizes why this map is just an awful idea and should have never been, you know, created. Um, but before I let it play out, I'd like to have like a, a commentator viewer sort of interaction right here. So what I'm going to let you do is I, I'm going to let you comment down below, you know, how many people you think see this guy right now. Yeah, I'll just give you a few seconds. Go ahead. All right, I'm, I'm assuming you've done that or, or didn't. Maybe maybe you're just excited just to see the answer. Uh, well, the answer is everybody and their dog. Modern multiplayer first-person shooters are really formulaic, but it wasn't always this way. There was a time in which first-person shooters were super tentative in their design, and what made them great was changing almost constantly. So because of that, it's not surprising that certain skills you develop to play older first-person shooters are no longer as useful in newer ones. They're still present, just not as valuable. But one skill that has always been consistently valuable to playing first-person shooter games, and as time goes on, becomes more valuable to, due to the more sedentary nature of targets in modern first-person shooters, is positioning. Knowing where to stand to catch your opponents off guard, while also mitigating their chances of getting the jump on you. Always a great trait to have. Good first-person shooters usually force you to change position every so often. The definition of good positioning changes within the context of your situation. This can be done with grenades or enemy flank routes, enemy spawns, etc. So that way, it rewards players for shaking things up and creates more dynamic gameplay. But uh, usually, it doesn't go as far as to remove good positioning from a match altogether. Uh, unless we're talking about boarding action from Halo CE. You are never safe on boarding action. There is always a good chance that somebody sees you, and if somebody sees you, they will shoot you because they have a sniper rifle. Everybody in the match has a sniper rifle when playing boarding action. This means that at any moment, you can die to a one-shot kill weapon. Psychologically, that's terrible. Nobody likes being one-shot. There are certain things in first-person shooters that everybody hates. One-shot's one of them, being stunned or pushed. While you can implement these in a balanced context within a first-person shooter, nobody likes being on the receiving end of them. Nobody likes being held in place, nobody likes being pushed around, and nobody likes being fucking deleted. Stick a Gatorade bottle in your asshole, fucking tool up pick. Which is why I've always found it interesting as to why Overwatch, Overwatch has such a massive goddamn raging hard on for these mechanics. Halo CE's boarding action is a map in which you are always getting one shot killed and doing one shot kills yourself. And you are punished with a one shot kill for making the slightest positional error. A positional error in this context means being alive for more than two and a half seconds. In addition to this, when you respawn because of Halo CE's brilliant respawn areas, oftentimes you'll just spawn into somebody else's crosshair and they'll grant you your absolution that you just got another six seconds ago. 
Because of this, boarding action is really unfun. Doing consistently well at boarding action is fucking unheard of, since respawning into other people's crosshairs, having people you didn't even see see you from across the map, and them getting an easy shot at you since Halo CE's characters don't really move fast, makes it really unfun. However, if I had to aim this sniper rifle with a controller, I probably would have some trouble, which is starting to make me think that a lot of these design flaws are being further exemplified by the fact that Halo Master Chief Collection is being released on PC, and considering the fact that 343 has the ability to tweak these games, they're not just straight ports, they've made patches in the past, I feel like they probably should considering that PC and console are very different monsters, and Halo being released on PC isn't really something that was taken, to, taken into account during the production of Halo CE. Wait, I think it was actually. What? Well, it wasn't taken into account regardless. Uh, anyways, boarding action is pretty much just the tip of the iceberg. We have a few maps to get through and some closing thoughts, so I'll be moving forward. I think his mate saw me. Who is responsible for this map? At first glance, you might look at Hang'em High and go, why even bring this up? It looks like it suffers from a lot of the same problems that the last map does, but you're wrong and I'm not, because because this map is far worse, okay? You see, while, while boarding action can only appear in one mode, that being Team Snipers, which, to be honest, isn't a really competitive mode, it's just for a laugh, and if I play boarding action, sometimes the novelty of being able to you know, see anybody at any time and getting all these quick scopes is fun. It's just not very fair or fun over a long period of time. This map is far worse because it shows up in far more playlists, including Team Snipers, Deathmatch, and perhaps the egregious of all, CTF, okay? And by CTF, I mean two flag CTF, where both teams have a flag that needs to be captured because the map's design works against CT sorry, it works with CTF's worst flaws, and by that I mean it enhances them. You see, the big problem with two-flag CTF is that both sides of the map are equal, okay? Because of that, there's always one side where one team is stronger than the other. It encourages a very slow playstyle, since as long as you're on your side, you'll have the positional advantage and therefore the combat advantage during any skirmishes. This map is awful because both sides are extremely strong, okay? The the area you spawn is extremely strong against oncomers. Why is that? Because the middle part of the map in which you use to traverse to your opponent's side of the map is it's just no man's land. It's terrible. The entire area is this wide open sight line, like almost as big as your mother. And it promotes this exact same issue that I had with, you know, uh, boarding action, except f far worse. Because, you know, the pistol is this hit-scan weapon, and it's super easy to hit. At least the sniper rifle has some sort of damage drop-off, right? Everybody spawns in with the pistol and starts pelting you with fucking pebbles that they found on the ground, and you die instantly. I mean, the clip that I showed when introducing the map should summarize that very nicely. It just, it, traversing with the slow walking speed that Halo CE grants you is, is near impossible. It sucks. Because of that, CTF games drag on for like six fucking decades. Like, they never end. Most of the time, what ends up happening is one team gets one measly point and then turtles for the rest of the game. And can I blame them? No, because getting three points sounds like this impossible task that, that's just an illusion. Like, you're not supposed to be able to get it. It's just there, you know? And because of that, every time Hang'em High shows up in my queue, it kind of feels like I lost the lottery. Like, like, you know, every time you queue for a Halo match, it's a random map. And because of that, when when I get Hang'em High, it's like, oh man, I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm just going to waste like 10 minutes, like a whole 10 minutes since the match isn't going to end preemptively. Just sitting here dying over and over while I'm trying to walk to the enemy flag. 
it doesn't work. It's awfully designed. And on top of that, unlike boarding action, this one aesthetically is really, really weak. Boarding action it has the novelty of being a spaceship, and it's kind of cool, like, oh, you're crossing to the other spaceship. This one, it, it, it just looks like a level editor map, and we'll get into why it is like that later, but I'm not going to spend another second on this map. We're moving on to the last map. Go away. Go away. No, go away, please. No, no. Longest is yet another in the incredibly long line of awful hellish fever dreams that one of the developers had and then proceeded to turn into a multiplayer map. Longest is essentially just a giant hallway, which is once again another really strange idea, you know, especially considering the last map was a giant open area. Now this one is an incredibly closed open area. The problem with Longest, aside from the fact that the idea in and of itself in a first person shooter is just not a good idea, is the fact that it works against one of Halo 1's additional really strange design choices when it came to multiplayer. I can understand why this is the way it is in campaign, but having four of each type of grenade at any given moment is pretty ridiculous. Halo 1 grenades are really strong. They drank their milk as a kid and they've grown up to be 6'5 and they go to the gym a lot. Because of that, it's very common in Halo 1 to be killed by people throwing tons of them since they can carry around four. The thing is, grenades in a first person shooter, to me, have always been a solution to a problem, not some compelling game mechanic. You see, as first person shooters have gotten slower, it has incentivized slower types of play. And of course, since positioning has become more important in first person shooters, sitting behind cover or sitting in areas that allow you to minimize, you know, a, a larger portion of your hitbox at any given moment uh, is usually the way to go in slower first-person shooters. So, because of that, grenades essentially become the solution to that. You throw a grenade, the opponent either moves, gets hurt, or dies. All hail the conquering hero. Weapon. Let us remember him as our protector, and not the one who gave us this. And for you, you know, hopefully the latter, right? If, if you're throwing it. So it's very hard for me to look at grenades as this grandiose, amazing, you know, uh, feat of game design. It's, it's more just a solution to a problem. But the thing is, when you give out too much of this solution, it creates its own problem. Giving somebody four of two types of grenades, and the grenades in the game are, are powerful, and this is a game where killing somebody isn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world, grenades become, you know, a, a very viable option, especially in a map where basically there is no way to go into cover at all at any given moment. So what ends up happening is you have people throwing grenades wherever they feel like people are going to stand. <laughs> not even necessarily where they are. This can mean that in any part of the map that isn't necessarily just a hallway, because there is like a tiny little pocket at each end of the map, these areas just end up being filled with explosions constantly. Not that the hallway itself isn't filled with explosions. This map is unique because, whereas with the other maps, I had fun in some, you know, some context, right? Um, this map was really really exceptionally bad just the idea of walking forward or backwards being my only real options was really not appealing to me i i, I didn't think it was a good idea at all uh what's unique about this map is it's not good in any context uh when you remove the halo ce pistol which once again we have established ruins everything under the fucking sun get out of my way at least on pc 
usually a map gets better. This is not the case. Every every you know instance I've played of this map has just been like a real test in patience and and you know deciding not to quit the game early. Uh, mostly because Xbox Live penalizes you for doing that. I I'm not sure why we're living in, in 2020. We're not supposed to be doing that shit anymore. But hey. So uh, I'm going to be moving on because this is really all I have to say about this. It's a it, fucking awful map. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this YouTube video. Yes, what a uh, humorous joke that was. Uh, if I was a viewer of the video and, and I wasn't me, I would say the joke is at least a six. Uh, it took me t 10 minutes to do. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be moving forward to uh, my, my closing thoughts of Halo CE on PC. Weapon. In 2020, does Halo CE hold up? Well, to answer that question, we're gonna... <laughs> no, 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 the, the answer is a massive no. Halo CE is basically the worst game of all time. If you've ever played Halo CE, you would agree. And if you for some reason like Halo CE, that's probably because you're a fart-smelling shit baby and should probably kill yourself. That being said, that's been another episode of Boy Afraid. Uh, stay tuned for my next video where I go to 343 and kill every single employee in their office. Offices. Okay, no, but seriously, Halo CE's multiplayer has aged really badly, and a lot of that has to do with the design philosophies behind how a lot of the maps were put together. You see, Halo CE's uh, multiplayer was actually an afterthought to the game, right? And for a lot of modern Halo fans, this might be jarring because Halo as a whole, culturally in the first-person shooter multiplayer space, is one of the biggest players. So to think that it started out as an afterthought, you know? To think that the biggest appeal for most people right, when they play Halo, was not something that was given any, you know, serious looks at initially, is pretty interesting. But it really did lay the groundwork for later Halo games, and, you know, without it, you wouldn't be able to, exp you know, have those precious memories of coming home and playing Halo 2 and, you know, talking about uh, how uh, you had fun on Xbox Live, etc. That wouldn't be able to manifest itself. Because of this, Halo 1 has um, this sort of experimentalist ideas attached to it, right? So, one of the singers from Big Country was talking about how um, he used to write songs when he first started and how it's much different from now. And he talked about this experimental naivete, he coined it, where when you start out, you, you try more things than, you know, later in your career. And while it doesn't always make something great, sometimes it does. And this is definitely the case with Halo CE. For every bad map that I talked about in this video, there had been really fun maps. I mean, a lot of people have incredible memories attached to Blood Gulch, period. It's just one of first person shooters, most iconic maps as a whole, right? So. This wouldn't manifest unless Halo C he had gone down this experimental route. Can I think of many other maps similar to Blood Gulch that had existed before Halo C he came out? Not really. Uh, it's a really cool map. It allows vehicle travel, it allows you to sit back and pick people off with a sniper. So, you know, everybody can have fun playing that map. Right? And without the, the want to explore different concepts, it just wouldn't exist. And even though I've talked about the multiplayer a lot, the campaign has aged fantastically. I mean, of course, it doesn't look as amazing as it ought to. But, you know, the, the campaign as a whole is really fun. Enemy design's fun. The soundtrack is mwah, really good. But as a whole, in 2020, Halo CE sort of takes more of a role as a memory or a relic from a different time. Playing it doesn't really give you that same competitive fun that, you know, a first-person shooter that you put a lot of time into 
uh, would, you know, like CSGO or whatever, and it, it isn't quite that casual, uh, you know, turn your brain off and play that Call of Duty is, but it's, an, it's a unique experience, and it almost allows you to go straight back into that period of first-person shooters, which I think is awfully beautiful. And that being said, that'll be the end of my video. Um, I should update you because it's been a while since I've uploaded. Um, my next video is going to be on Hotline Miami. I want it to sort of cohesively meld into the uh, thesis of the last video. And I want it to be of higher quality since I do edit much better now. And I also uh, did a little bit of work with my mic. So look forward to that. Thank you very much. Yeah.